Hey guys, Luna here and welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. Super excited about today's guest. We have Pascal Vinstein. He's the head of growth at Blockport. So Blockport is a social crypto exchange where he helped sell out their tokens in under 15. Well, okay. So the token sell took under 15 minutes. Yes. He, yeah. So he also runs his own blockchain marketing agency called Spike. With this agency, he recently organized multiple blockchain investor summits, Square Five, for instance, in New York during Blockchain Week and then uh, during the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Pascal. Yeah, uh, awesome. I'm so happy to be here and uh, very excited to answer your questions. So, I mean, obviously, the question that's everyone's mind, uh, and if we can just jump right into it, is selling out tokens in 15 minutes. Quite impressive. Let me actually quote, because I found this amazing quote from Hacked. The Blockport ICO pre-sale began on January 3rd and ended within three, mi three minutes of reaching the team's goal of 1,666 Ethereum. Uh, yeah, what's up with the 66? Like <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> anyway, so yeah, so, ba so, so basically you said 1 million, correct? Yeah, that's uh, 1 million. The, the pre-sale was, um, uh, we did was 1 million and, uh, uh, and that had like a, a, a bonus on the investment. And then we also did a crowd sale three weeks after of 9 million. So what would, what would you say were some of the components? How were you able to gain so much traction and make this possible? Um, well, I guess like a lot of it has to do with the market circumstances where, which have like completely drastically changed uh, since then. That's like, we true. Were, January we 2018 were, was quite different from today's. Yeah, definitely. That was like uh, we were fortunate enough to launch like peak peak bull market uh, mm -hmm. and peak Bitcoin price uh, before afterwards uh, everything went uh, down the drain. But, but still, I mean, you guys have quite a quite an impressive story. So, I mean, uh, what did you do to sort of build uh, momentum around the launch and and get people on board and excited about the project? Yeah, definitely. So I. Um, um, well, especially the founders uh, very strongly felt that um, even though crypto was gaining traction, uh, it was still like too complex for people to uh, get into the space, like get your money onto an exchange and start trading in different uh, kinds of coins. And um, like um, their failure proposition of having an easy to use crypto exchange mm -hmm. uh, resonated with a lot of people that we uh, shared our messaging with. And like we found that out pretty quickly after doing some short interviews with people in our direct network. We refined like the messaging and started testing ads and see if we got people interested to get into our uh, either for investing or like getting their email address. And a lot of people just converted and um, communicated their interest. So we started ramping that up. Um, right, because that's the other thing that was before the ban, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. So that was uh, also, uh, I'll also call that market conditions. It's not something we can influence. But uh, yeah, we had a free card of running ads very aggressively um, on Facebook. Facebook worked very well for us. Like we generated custom audiences from our LinkedIn connections, uh, created lookalike audiences, and also retargeting people that got onto our website and um, uh, urging them to convert to whitelist for the token sale. So that helped a lot. And I guess the uh, initial traction that we got uh, mostly got generated by our partnership with ARC. Uh, back then, I believe there were top 30 coin uh, that has changed since, I believe. But um, uh, they had a large community and they allowed us to do a an AMA in their community. And a lot of people also there got very enthused by our um, our value proposition and got into our own community. So that was very welcome at that point as well. So knowing that we are in a different market now and things have changed drastically from January 2018 to, to today, how would you do things differently in order to get similar results? Considering the fact that you can't run ads anymore, like obviously you'd have to spend more time building the community and raising awareness through different outlets. So what would you recommend companies who are looking uh, to raise funds now? Um, 
Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a good question, and that's something we're constantly running into with our uh, with our marketing agency as well. Um, I would say if you are planning to do a token sale, uh, that's mostly consists of doing a crowd sale, uh, is to do, to not do it basically at that point at this point. Like you're not going to sell out because the uh, the sentiment is just not there. Uh, so if you desperately want to do a crowd sale uh, because you firmly believe in decentralization, I would I would write it out. So um, ask people for their interest on your website, but don't announce that you're going to launch anytime soon because the people are just not converting. If you do want to run a token sale uh, on short notice, uh, I would highly recommend uh, start approaching uh, investors Maybe VCs, if you want to give out equity, if you don't want to give out equity, uh, at least larger time investors or blockchain or crypto funds that are willing to take that risk and still want to do that investment. But I do feel and I do see in my direct network also that, that some companies and startups uh, are willing to give up some equity to to raise that at least the seed round too, so they can like keep moving. You're absolutely right. And I mean, early on in the market, that's exactly what we saw. Lots of bounty, airdrops. Yeah. This, these were the marketing strategies that a lot of these ICO were leveraging and we're seeing a shift. So what are you what are you seeing right now that's that's successful? How are how are these companies building diehard communities? What's what's been working on your guys's end, for instance? Um, well, to get that initial kickstart, mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily have to give away tokens. Uh, we feel um, that a lot of uh, a lot of like participants in bounty programs they attract a lot of um, uh, people from lower income countries, and those are ne not necessarily like the investors you would like to have in your initial community. But you can still give away uh, other prizes that are valuable to the community. Um, and run a viral contest as opposed to a bounty program um, that could still include uh, creating content about um, uh, the project, uh, sharing uh, stuff about the project or uh, following on the social channels and reward the ones that are most active uh, with prizes that are not necessarily financial products. That also works and um, I think that's a more sustainable way to go about than, uh, than running a bounty program. Um, that being said, um, it's good for an initial kickstart, uh, but to keep your community engaged and raving, you need to have like a solid roadmap, stick to your plan as much as possible. Like with, especially with development is like, you can't make any promises on when something definitely is going to be delivered, but you need to be very clear on what you want to deliver and when, uh, and update the community about it. Like being transparent is, it's like, uh, uh, age old advice, I guess, but like, uh, honestly, uh, honesty just gets you the furthest. So, uh, being transparent on the current developments, uh, about the state of like raising investments, uh, about like what your team is like, how you're expanding. Um, I think that's the most important to keep, uh, the trust of your community and, and keeping them engaged. Right. And so another thing that's really tough for a lot of these uh, blockchain startups is the fact that you need to be present in so many different you need to be pre present in so many different channels, right? You need to have the yeah. Telegram group, the Bitcoin talk, the Nthread, the Medium, Sema, Discord, GitHub, Reddit, yeah. Bitcoin <laughs> Wiki, Slack channels. Yeah. Which, unless you have deep pockets, it's going to be quite challenging to moderate, manage, etc. So, obviously, like, how do you sort of break? Uh, is there like a, a middle line, like a way to be able to build the community little by little, obviously raise enough interest to be able to get the capital to do the proper due diligence when it comes to the marketing efforts? What I mean, what, for instance, you, you mentioned the fact that you guys tapped into different networks. Is that the way to do it? Like, what's what's your recommendation? Yeah, so I feel that... Uh, it can be very valuable to have uh, a partnership with another um, definitely larger than your company's uh, crypto uh, or blockchain company. Uh, if they already have a raging community and they uh, and your value proposition has some overlap uh, with uh, their product on a technical level or on a community level, 
um, and you can communicate that clearly. Uh, like if you manage to like get some kind of deal, like okay, you can run an AMA in our community, and you can then convince that community of your value. Th then you already have some initial people in your like at least emotionally invested in your product. And um, if you have your plan well thought out, and you can uh, enthuse those people and and make them or at least some of them raving fans. You don't necessarily need to have deep pockets to have uh, to generate uh, community managers uh, from uh, that community. That's basically also what we did at Blockboard. Some people were so raving, ravingly enthusiastic about uh, about Blockboard that they just wanted to help us out for free or for tokens whenever the token sale was complete. So that uh, that definitely helped us and uh, uh, also uh, helped us to keep our budget in check, especially pre-token sale. So, what are some of the communities? Um that you tapped into. I mean, you, you mentioned art earlier, but is there any other communities that you recommend that are that are? I mean, or what's the research that someone could do as far as like figuring out which community is right for them? Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely depends on your on your business model. So, um, uh, Arc obviously is a, a blockchain project that, with their Aces network, wants to connect different blockchain networks to each other. And the resonating part in the value proposition was that we are building an exchange that connects different exchanges to each other. So there was a technical overlap there. And um, when we entered their community, um, well, when we got in touch with their CFO, um, he was already enthusiastic about it. He saw a lot of possibilities also on a technical level, and he wanted to see whatever we could do uh, with each other. And he allowed us to do an AMA and see if we actually knew what we were talking about. And we held our ground. And, uh, like, there was also some confirmation uh, to the project that we knew what we were doing and uh, they wanted to do a partnership with us. Um, so I would try and find something similar. Um, so if you have an MVP or an alpha product or even just, like, uh, uh, a prototype, um Start reaching out to a couple of projects that that like are not completely similar, but would uh, be possibly complementary to your product or service or community, and just start doing outreach to them. Like the space is still pretty small, and I still see that a lot of projects are pretty open to help each other out. Like some are I've already like grown a lot that you don't get a response as easily anymore, but there are still enough to to uh, to get in touch with and see whatever you can do for each other. And did you guys tap at all into influencers in the space, YouTubers or individuals who are well known in the Twitter space as well? Um, yeah, we we recently started doing some paid uh, coverage by influencers, and uh, even though the guys did some uh, great work on uh, covering us, um, the uh, sentiment just isn't there anymore that it generates enough traffic to, at least for us, to make the investment work well. Um, like during um, uh, the early stages of the token sale that we did at Blockport, um, we got some organic coverage by influencers, and that had much greater effect than the paid efforts that, that we did recently. So, and how were you um, able to get the organic coverage, you think? Um, um, I guess some of the people, uh, because we got covered by Supplemen, for example. Yes, and, um, I saw that on YouTube, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, um, uh, people have opinions of him, but we, we very much appreciated uh, him covering us. And he is a very loyal uh, community. And uh, some people of his community were already in Arch community, which also got into the Blockport community, which then mentioned it in his community that he should cover it, and uh, he covered it. So that, uh, that, that helped us get uh, organic coverage. Yeah, but there were a few others. I'm trying to look right now, but I can't find it for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, you guys got quite a bit. I mean, that's the other thing about the beauty of getting organic coverage. Like, once a YouTuber covers it, it's easy for others to piggyback on it, essentially. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what about events? And as an ICO or a company in general, like our even security token um, company, like, do you think participating in events has any sort of value and good ROI? Have you guys played a, a lot uh, with that at all or? Um, yeah, definitely. I, um, well, I just, with events, the, especially uh, uh, consensus in New York, 
like they ask outrageous prices and I'm not sure if it's uh worthwhile um if you're not looking for investment like if you if you can find investment uh, investors there then it might be worthwhile but only for users uh well depending on your product um wouldn't be that interesting that quickly so I always try to hustle some kind of deal that we can get there uh, or for free or uh, with, with a discount um, and so that it would be worth well um, that being said uh, if you go with enough people and everyone has the hustle mindset and like subscribes to your newsletter it might be interesting but I think it's most interesting to uh, to go out there for uh, for investments well, what's really interesting too is that I've noticed, because I have a, my meetup in Barcelona, is that yeah. a lot of smaller companies, blockchain companies, are reaching out to meetups in different locations, whether in Europe, I'm sure it's also happening in different parts of the world, yeah. and providing small sponsorship in exchange for coverage. Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. And I think that's definitely. a really smart idea, because you're absolutely right. Some, I guess one of the main problem when you're dealing with larger conferences the fact is the, is the fact that it's going to get pretty expensive pretty fast yeah exactly exactly so definitely I will uh, I very much agree with you on this one uh, that I think uh, if you're early stages uh, just seek out some of the grassroots smaller meetups or events that are get organized in um, like cities that have um, uh, your target audience in them and see if you can sponsor them or if you can get a free talk there. Uh, because that's the thing. It's that I, I think like doing the speaking gigs at those events, um, like it's basically like free acquis a free acquisition channel. It costs you nothing except your time. If you have an engaging story, you have the undivided attention of everyone that's in that room. So, yeah. So, in hindsight, let's. I'm going to kind of give you a challenging question. If you were to have to launch Blockport. In December 2018, how would you think? How would you do it differently in order to get decent traction? And what oh, do you wow. think some of the challenges would be? So, what would you do that you know worked well, and what do you think would be some of the challenge you would have? Um, that is a very good question, Luna. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think we trick we, question. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think we wouldn't be able to uh, uh, sell it out in the same fashion uh, that we did last year mm -hmm. uh, for obvious reasons. Market circumstances aren't there. And the fact that we're a crypto exchange, like we're very much dependent on people willing to uh, trade crypto. And also our USP of being an easy to use crypto exchange uh, is much more resonating with the people that didn't have any understanding of the market uh, to get into it. So mostly the new uh, the people new to crypto, uh, as opposed to the people that are familiar with crypto or like true crypto experts or traders, uh, which currently only are very high, highly engaged still with the with the crypto market. So um, I would argue that it would be way more interesting um, in terms of raising investment is to um, uh, look at VC investment as VC investment or seed investment. Uh, give out like some part um, of equity and um, um, uh, then seeing if we can generate traction. So get out a prototype, um, getting people to trade on the platform and seeing if they, uh, uh, if we can generate some traction in order to raise maybe a series A or like doing a delayed token sale uh, to generate some extra funds. But um, uh, that's basically what we're doing right now as well, I'm trying to generate traction, getting more people into the platform. But it's uh, it's a tough market right now, so it's uh, pulling all the strings. Uh, we still found some ways to circumvent the Facebook ad blockages, um, but um, yeah, it's still some uh, like very hacky tactics to uh, to get people to the to the platform. And you just brought a really good point: the fact that the community that's currently still eating and breathing blockchain crypto is the diehard community who is more advanced, quote unquote, or savvier. The yeah. initial, so kind of a, the, yeah, because I mean, we just lost a lot of the momentum as far as mass adoption that we had back earlier in the year. Yeah. So you're dealing with an audience who has more knowledge and 
probably is, it's a little tougher, I would suggest, um, I would yeah. say, to, to convert them. So, I mean, how's that Definitely. worked for you guys? Like, how, how has it been, like, these last few months? I'm curious. Um, so, we did run a um, beta access contest in a very steeply downtrending market. Um, and with the uh, better access contest, we incentivized uh, people to participate. Uh, it was basically a viral contest, and the top 500 would get priority access onto our beta platform. Um, and uh, next to that, we also gave away BPT for the top 100, I believe. Um, and uh, that went completely nuts. We saw one million, one million participants. Uh, like sharing content about Blockboard, liking our, our, our social pages uh, in order to get a chance to get into um, our, our beta product. So that worked very well and that gave us some, uh, some traction and momentum and, of course, like a large email list uh, that we could reach out to when, when we launched our, our eventual uh, beta product. Um, that being said, currently we onboarded uh, a couple of thousand um, uh, users on the beta platform. Um, we're currently in uh, the development of building our internal exchange. We're currently only uh, connecting to external exchanges. We started out with Bitstamp. Recently, we also connected with Bitfinex and with KuCoin. And uh, because we listed KuCoin, we can now also, um, because Blockport token is only listed on the KuCoin exchange, we can now also list uh, block for token on the block for exchange. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, that. So what are, I mean, you mentioned already a lot of sort of the next step for you guys. When are you going to have, you already have a product out. When are you, what's the next phase? Um, the, the, yeah, the next most important phase for us would be to build the internal exchange. Uh, and we feel pretty strongly that, uh, the community, um, they want us to do more marketing, but I think the underlying argument they're making is we want to see uh, the token price increase to get uh, a better return on investment. Right. And um, um, we we started experimenting with also some of the influencer marketing because like the, the visibility also satisfies the community, but um, it just once the to your utility token doesn't have an actual utility you won't generate sustainable growth. So uh, I think the biggest milestone for us is to build the uh, internal exchange so we can actually implement and execute uh, the utility of our token because then if it actually gets used to, for example, copy trade someone's portfolio uh, and get discounted trading fees um, and um, uh, have higher deposit limits if you hold uh, Blockboard tokens, um, then because of the actual usage, uh, actual scarcity will um, um, uh, exist and will increase uh, the, the well, arguably uh, increase the, the token price. So I, I think that would be the biggest milestone. Also in uh, in generating some more interest from our community to to actively actively start using our platform. Awesome. And any sort of last set of advice you want to give to people watching who currently uh, have a startup blockchain startup. What's the best way to start their marketing efforts? Where should they focus their time, you think? If they're in the very um, early stage. Yeah. Um, so I would argue, um, like we just mentioned, like make a list. Um, like if you don't have the budget to travel or whatever, see whatever is in the neighborhood. Like if you're in a city, there's usually one or two meetups uh, that are blockchain or crypto related. And just start talking to people and uh, start validating your idea. If you're super early stage, you need to know there's some interest from the market that you're targeting, and those meetups are just free opportunities to do so. And especially if you're early stage, you have nothing to lose. You just just go to these events. Uh, if you do have the opportunity to travel, you're fortunate enough to do that, then maybe find some larger events. Um, if you don't have budget for the tickets, Maybe uh, just volunteer at those events so you can get in touch with uh, with the high profile people, and um, um, I, I think it's just most important to to network and get your face in front of some people to uh, uh, to validate your your assumptions about your business model and uh, uh, being able to to get in touch with them uh, once you're further in your development. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Pascal, for all this amazing insight that you shared with us. Where can we find you on social media? Um, I'm most active on LinkedIn. Just okay. uh, ask, add me on uh, Pascal von Steen, uh, which is uh, Steen is spelled S T W E N. Um, I'm also on Instagram um, at Pascal von Steen and um, uh, and on Facebook, obviously Pascal von Steen. Uh, or otherwise, just email me on Pascal at blockboard.io or Pascal at wespikegrowth.io. And I will thank make so sure much. to include. And I'll make sure to include all the following in the description. All right, okay, thank you guys. Sorry. Thank you, Pascal. Okay, hey, cheers. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.